All right, we'll give y'all a few minutes to get on here since we're having to uh, put these two services together, and uh, and we'll give y'all a few minutes to get on here. And uh, it's been uh, it's been good to uh, uh, have some time to study today and uh, kind of get around and pray. And I know that we've had a lot of events going on here lately, and uh, so we just uh, we're praying. I know that. Uh, kind of uh, different tonight given the fact we're having to do everything online tonight but I assure you that this is a precautionary thing and that uh, we'll get back to uh, the same old same old soon and I want to also encourage each of you all to be praying for those in our church family that have been affected by this COVID and we just ask that you continue to keep their keep them in your prayers and uh, remember to uh, pray for their families as well as they care for them. Uh, sometimes we forget that those folks, even though they have it, they've got families that have to care for them as well. So uh, keep them in your prayers and uh, just remember that uh, uh, God's got this thing. And no matter what, he's got this thing. Uh, so I want to also encourage you, if you've got a prayer request or anything like that, that uh, you usually get through to us, please email that. Uh, that should be somewhere down in the comments or somewhere where our, our tech savvy people will put it there and they'll say my email and uh, you can send that in. Let us know how we can be praying for you and know that we are uh, very much in prayer for you at all times and so I hope I've given everybody enough time to get on here and we will, we will go ahead and get started. And so we're going to be in the book of Jude. I know many of you all may have been... Uh, ready for us to jump into the book of second kings but we're going to wait until next week to do that until we're hopefully back in person and and also the online version uh we'll be able to hand out the worksheets and all that stuff so uh hopefully uh hopefully next week we'll reevaluate and uh be back in person we do want to make one announcement uh this coming sunday due to some safety precautions that we're taking uh, I want to encourage you that uh, we are bringing both of our services to one. So the 9 a.m. service and the 11 a.m. service will both meet at 11 a.m. and the drive-in. Uh, so we'll have one service this Sunday. And if you're used to coming to one or the other, just know we're having one service, and that's at 11 a.m. on Sunday. So we encourage you to be there. Uh, from my heart, it's going to be it's going to be really awesome to get to see the whole church in one service uh, again, which is going to be great, and I look forward to that. And uh, so uh, we look forward to seeing you all there at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Remember, if you're used to coming at nine, not go, well, there'll be somebody there, but there won't be no preaching. <laughs> but uh, we'll see everybody at 11 a.m. this Sunday, and then next week we'll reevaluate. Uh, and we'll reevaluate, and that's the drive-in. We're only doing a drive-in. Uh, so we'll be out there with loudspeakers and FM radio station and all that good stuff. So we look forward to uh, seeing you. Uh, I will probably be cold, so it'll probably be at least uh, maybe a 45-minute sermon, so you know, so I'm not so cold. But uh, some of y'all didn't laugh at that. But anyway, all right, so we are in the book of Jude. I want to just give a quick devotion tonight. And the reason I'm just doing a quick devotion is because uh, there's a lot going on and, and a lot that I've had to uh, uh, be, uh, be, be with this week. So I haven't had a lot of time to uh, do a lot of studies. But I do, uh, or I have had a chance to really kind of look into Jude. And so I'm excited about hopefully some encouragements from Jude. And so we'll get started by a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord, for this day. Lord, I thank you for your love, your kindness, and your mercy that you show us every day, Father. Lord, I pray that you just help us as we dive into your word. We dive into your, your, your apostle's epistle, and we uh, look at what they've got to say and some of the warnings and the exhortations that they have for us. And so, Father, we love you, and we thank you for all that you do and all that you continue to do in our lives. Lord, we ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. I hope if you have your Bible, uh, we're going to be in the book of Jude. It is one of the shortest letters in the Bible. Uh, it starts out with Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. Now, if for you scholars out there, you know that James was a half-brother of Jesus, so that makes Jude a half-brother of Jesus. 
And so he starts out with an encouragement and an exhortation to stay steadfast. He's saying those who are called and sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. So in short, he's saying, stand, man, stand. Contend for the faith. Stay faithful to what God has set before you. He says, beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. So we see right off the bat, Jude is like, he's he's writing and saying, hey, I, I was going to write to you talking about a common salvation that we share, and, and I was going to encourage you, and I was going to tell you how awesome things were, but I found it necessary to write to you exhorting, or exhorting you to contend earnestly in the faith. So he was, he, was, he was starting his letter with one thing and said, okay, now I see that I need to write it about this. And what he wants to talk about is some of the apostates and some of the things that's going on in this day and time. And so he's predicting uh, things that are going to happen and that are soon to happen. And so he, he starts out in verse uh, 16. He says, These are grumblers, complainers, walking among you to their own lust and their mouth, great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But I want you to understand something. They are they are foretelling about some apostates, some false teachers that are to come. And he's saying, I want you to not be surprised. I don't want you to be uh, caught off guard when these men come because they are coming. And so he says they are scoffers coming. There are mockers coming. There are people that are coming that are are going to try to take you captive away from the true gospel. So he's telling them again, contend for the faith. Be faithful to the faith of God. And so then he goes on and he says this. He says, here's some things I want you to build up on. Here's some things I want you to contend for. And that is this. I want you to build up your faith. In verse 20, he, I'm sorry, verse 18, he starts out and says, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last times who would walk according to their own ungodly lust they are sensual persons who would cause division not having the spirit now if you have a king james version or a new king james version or esv that s the in the spirit is capitalized because it's talking about the spirit of god and it's not talking about some other spirit it's talking about the spirit of god so he's saying these sensual persons who cause divisions do not have the Spirit of God. There are many false teachers that may look like uh, they are uh, uh, good, meaningful preachers and teachers, but if they are teaching a gospel that is in contradiction to God's Word, they are what is called false teachers. Uh, there's, there's really no nice way of saying it. Uh, nobody... Uh, uh, really wants to go around being that guy that's calling everybody a false teacher but if they are teaching something in contradiction to God's word they are a false teacher or false preacher or false prophet or um, so on you, you get the point there but he's saying here he's saying here build up your in verse 20 but you beloved building up yourselves upon your most holy faith I had a pastor uh, whenever I first got back into church used to always use the analogy of building up your faith in conjunction to building up a muscle. He said, you know, if you, if you work out your faith, just like if you work out a muscle, it gets stronger, it gets bigger, it gets more resilient, it gets more stamina. And so if you're working on your faith and you're constantly building your faith, then you're getting stronger in your faith. But if you do nothing in your faith and you don't work out your faith and you leave your faith to, to just mere chance, then you're a weak and you're 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 you're, you're limp. You're you're not really going to accomplish anything unless you're building up your faith. He's saying build up yourselves, your most holy faith. Praying, praying. Listen, I want you to understand. They are encouraging you to build up your faith. They are encouraging you to to pray, to pray in the Holy Spirit, to pray uh, always. Listen, I, I was uh, looking at a thing earlier. I was doing a, a, a speech for school and was talking about uh, in the end times uh, the what the social media will show is that our lack of prayerlessness will not be due to lack of time. Now I'll let that soak in for just a minute. Uh, a few months ago my wife showed me a thing on my phone. Uh, if you've got an iPhone you can flip over there and it'll show you what's called your screen time. 
Uh, now I can I can come home and tell you just how busy I was that day, and my precious wife could open my phone and show me my screen time, and she could say, "Baby, you spent." 30 minutes on Instagram and you spent this much time on this and you spent that much time on that and she could show me that I was not prioritizing. She wasn't being mean about it, but she was showing me that I could I could cut some time if maybe I didn't have all these things filling time that I could be doing other things. So prayer, he's saying to pray. The, the, remember to pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God. Remember, he is saying Number one, build up your faith, remember to pray, and remember to keep yourself in love of Jesus Christ. Listen, God loved you when you were unlovable. He picked you up when you were unpickable. He lifted you up when you were unliftable. And he loves you even when we are at our most unlovable. So we should always show the love of Christ and be building that up and showing that to other folks. And so next thing we need to see is this. He says, here's some attributes I want you to have. I want you to have the attributes of verse uh, 21. Keeping yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, have mercy on unbelievers. Uh, have mercy on those who don't know. Have mercy on those who have not uh, met Jesus yet. And remember to show them the love of God. And he goes on to say, the mercy that leads to eternal life. Listen. We have all experienced grace. We've all experienced mercy. Uh, if you're alive today, God has God has granted you grace and mercy for you to still have air in your body today at this very moment. And so we have all been granted mercy. But here's the part that I really wanted to do as a devotion. Uh, it's a doxology of sorts or a concludent. Uh, but in verse 24, he says, Now to him who is able. I want you to understand, I don't know where you're at in your life today or what stage of life you're at, but I want you to understand that if you serve God and you are God's uh, child, then he is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. I, I love this, and if I could sing worth a lick, I would sing it. But he says, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Listen, it is, brings God joy to present you to himself. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. We serve a God that is still on the throne. We serve a God that is... He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. We serve a God that is never changing. We serve a God that uh, is not wringing his hands. And we serve a God who it does not matter who's in the White House, who's in the, the, the back house, whoever's. It doesn't matter. God is still on the throne. He's still sovereign, and he still loves you and I. And so I want to impart you with this. One more time, I want to read this to you. It says, now to him who is able. You, you, you may just need to hear that, that God is able to meet your needs wherever you're at. He is able to do above and beyond what you exceedingly thought or even imagined he could do for you. But God is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. I am, I am so glad that I serve a God who it is his joy to present me to his presence. And, and I want you to understand something. His glory and majesty will last forever and ever. Amen. I don't serve a little God. I serve a big God. And what it would do some of us Christians to do to stop putting him in a box and realize that he made the box and everything that we can put in it. <laughs> and just remember that he loves us he loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And I hope that each of you all know that uh, he, he, he did die for us. And that his, his mercy is extended to you even now. And so I ask that you uh, extend that to others. Extend the love, the mercy to those in the world. We're just going to claim to know that he is able. I love that. I can't get over that. I keep. I, I kept on reading that. 
reading that, reading that. Lord have mercy. I kept on reading that. Now to him who is able. He's able. I'm glad I serve a God who is able. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just loving us. We thank you for your kindness and your mercy that you showed us, Lord. God, I pray that you just help each one that is listening, Lord. I pray that you help build up their faith, build up our prayer life, and increase our love for people in the world. Father, we give you all the honor and the glory for all that you do and all that you continue to do. Father, we love you so much, Lord, and we thank you for all of our many blessings. And Lord, we thank you for a continued protection that you've given us, Lord, and we just thank you and we love you. Father, we ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. want to encourage you, uh, Sunday, don't forget, Sunday at 11 a.m., both the services are coming into one. Sunday, drive-in, 11 a.m., not having the second service we're just doing the one service i just don't want you to show up at nine and be upset uh so pass that word along love your neighbor and don't forget to